everyone welcome back to chapter 8 this is the sixth part and in this part we're going to continue our look at different types of reactions and we're going to look at acid base reactions so let's do a little defining okay acids are actually molecular compounds but they dissociate as if they were ionic and so they dissociate by producing a hydrogen ion and then whatever the anion is will also become an ion. And so they're composed of hydrogen and hydrogen is, and that's why when you see the formulas, you see that hydrogen written first because that hydrogen is what is actually gonna participate in that reaction. So acids, um, so, so when you look at them, so there, here's a few examples of the different ones. These are some strong acids, and it's important we remember the difference between a strong acid versus a weak acid, as in the case of acetic acid or vinegar, um, because strong acids completely dissociate, okay, in water, and weak acids only slightly dissociate. That's why strong acids are strong electrolytes because they produce a lot of um, ions in, in, in the water and weak acids are very weak electrolytes because only some of that molecular acid becomes ionized. Okay, Acids are sour tasting. If you've ever tasted vinegar, you know what I'm talking about. Um, they dissolve metals typically. So the simplest definition of an acid is an Arrhenius definition, and it's a substance that produces hydrogens. Okay, pretty easy. Okay, so if you see one and when you do the ionization of it, it produces a hydrogen, you can rest assured that that is an acid. There are also things called, this is a monoprotic acid here. Meaning that it only has one proton. Um, you can also have polyprotic, so you have a diprotic sulfuric acid, and then phosphoric acid is polyprotic. It has three hydrogens, okay? A base in the Arrhenius system is something that produces an OH, and so these are your classical bases that have um, a metal and then an OH, and then they will ionize and form the hydroxide ion when you put them in water. This is just um, from the Tro book, just a, a list of different ones. And I just put um, the weak ones are down here in kind of a pinky red color. Um, acetic acid and hydrofluoric acid are the examples of weak acids that we typically look at. Ammonia is the weak base, all right? Pretty much what, what you see is the OHs, especially um, in groups one and two, or 1A, 2A, um, if you see those attached to them, those are gonna be strong. So when I react these together in an acid-base reaction, we also call that a neutralization reaction. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take something that's acidic, which is less than seven pH, and we're gonna react it with, with a base, which is greater than seven pH. And when I get done, I'm gonna be close to seven, which is neutral, okay? so. That's basically why we call it a neutralization reaction. And just like in precipitation reactions, we're going to have an anion combining with the cation of the other, and that's how we're gonna uh, predict the products. So in an acid and base reaction, we call it neutralization. So here is an example of a strong acid and a strong base. And when you put those two things together, you're gonna swap the positive calcium is gonna attach to the nitrate and the positive H is going to 
attached to the negative OH. And so that forms HOH, other, otherwise known as water, and the calcium nitrate. All right, notice I write this as liquid water because it's not aqueous because it's not dissolved in itself. It is the dissolving um, solution or solvent. Okay, so the net reaction, the net ionic reaction of any strong acid, strong base is going to be H plus plus OH minus gives you water. And when it's complete, the moles of acid will be equal to the moles of the base because it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be exactly 7 when it neutralizes. It just means that moles of acid and moles of base are going to be equal because it depends on which one was a stronger acid. You know, sometimes the acid's a lot stronger than the base, etc. So we use these two things interchangeably a lot of times. H plus from the acid and then this thing called the hydronium ion. Okay, most people just use those interchangeably and honestly, you use whichever one is helpful in balancing the equation. Um, the reason that you can use hydronium is because like if, like if I'm saying, you know, H2O turns into H plus and OH minus, right? But if I have H2O plus H2O, I'm going to produce H3O plus plus OH minus, and then I'm balanced. Does that make sense? So, you know, either way you want to do it, typically I'm going to use an H plus um, combining with an OH minus, but, you know, you can use hydroniums if, if you feel more comfortable with that. Um, and, you know, when you're looking at the bases, you're going to have OH minuses as well. So you've got to have OH minuses in there if you're in a basic solution. Okay, so let's let's write an equation for an acid base reaction with a strong acid and a strong base. Okay, notice it wants you to write the molecular and the net ionic equation. Okay, so remember what I told you about that? What the net ionic equation is always for a strong acid and a strong base. Okay, so I have a reaction between HI and barium hydroxide. All right, so what are my products? One of my products is going to be water, right? Because this is a neutralization reaction. So, and, and usually we write water second. And remember, that's going to be a liquid. And the reason we, it's a liquid is because we leave it together when we write it on the other side. Otherwise, nothing would be happening. Okay, so you've got HI aqueous and barium hydroxide aqueous. And then the product of that is going to be barium. And barium is a plus 2. And so it's going to be BAI2. So the, before I do the, the ionic equation, I've got to balance it. So I'm going to have two HIs, barium hydroxide, BAI, and the BAO2. And then on this side, I'll need two waters to balance that. And, you know, if you need to take more time in balancing, feel free. These typically are not super hard to balance. Um, so, and once you balance the, the I in this case, um, which is obvious, um, then you can, you can see that, you know, your H's will have to be balanced and then that'll also take care of your O's. All right, so this is the molecular. And then if I was gonna write the complete ionic, which is, I didn't ask for that, right? I asked for the net ionic. We know what the net ionic of this is gonna be because it's a strong acid, strong base. So when I get down here and I need the net, it's going to be two H pluses plus two 
OH minuses gives me two H2Os or H plus plus OH minus is H2O. Okay, so you can do the um, the intermediate step here if you want to but if only if I'm asking for it okay and so just to get a little practice we'll do it but if you just remember it's the net is always going to be this for strong acid strong base so the complete would be 2H plus plus 2I minus aqueous aqueous plus BA2 plus plus 2 OH minus and that gives me is this soluble BAI2 yes it's aqueous as well so BA2 plus plus 2 I minus plus 2 H2O and so when I identify the spectators it's everything but the H's and the O's okay and so then you get your net okay easy peasy and there's your practice HBr and lithium hydroxide all right so I, I mentioned earlier that if you had a a weak acid it doesn't ionize completely and so acetic acid is not one of the six strong acids that you should know um, or you can look at the chart um, and so when I write these it's going to be a little bit different because this does not completely ionize so I'm still going to have some of it left in the molecular um, state so when I when I write the molecular for this okay I'm going to write the HC2H3O2 which is acetic acid which is a weak acid plus KOH which is strong and they're still aqueous aqueous right and they're going to form you know, remember that this is a weak acid so it's not going to go completely to the right so it's going to have the double arrows it's going to to produce K C2H3O2 plus H2O and everything's already balanced notice that since K was a plus one it just takes the place of the hydrogen in the acetate ion okay all right so then the complete is going to be the weak acid HC2H3O2 because even though it's aqueous it doesn't 100% dissociate into ions so it is still in the molecular form okay plus the strong base will completely ionize still a double arrow to K plus plus the acetate ion plus liquid water so are there spectators yes there are potassium is on both sides but that's the only one I see so in a weak acid you're still going to have the molecular form of the acid that you started with so my net is going to be HC2H3O2 because that molecular form still exists plus the strong base and then it's going to form the acetate ion and liquid water 
so that weak base stays in that form throughout the process. If it's a strong acid, it's going to completely ionize, so you're going to bust it apart like we did in the in the first one. Okay, all right. So that's acid and base uh, reactions and some definitions of those. So, and I put this on here just because I want you to practice, you know, remembering that how you how you are going to form these by having the H2O and the BACL2. So you need to be able to do these. So I'm going to leave this one for you to do because you've got to be able to put these together, okay, because it's really important that you can predict products. All right, and that's it for acid-base reactions.